Hello, this is day 10. Yep, you listen, you know when I started these videos, I feel like I can tell you this because, you know, like we're friends now. You you watch me every day. I never thought about the fact that I have to do like wardrobe changes. I wasn't thinking the fact that I have to try and dig out a new outfit every single, well, a new top every single day. Um, because you know I've been in lockdown so I pretty much live in the same clothes pretty much and can't get to TK Maxx because it's closed so you know so if you start to see me recycle clothes don't be coming for me you know don't come for me we're friends so I can wear my same Gap t-shirt and my my New York Jets t-shirt and stuff and I, I feel like you won't judge me anyway so I just want to pick up on some of the things I talked about yesterday um imagine this is almost a bit like a part two Right, I don't know how to say this, but there are many businesses out there right now. You know, I've mentioned this kind of, I've kind of touched on this in previous videos, but so the title of this video, day 10, is going to be It's not dissimilar to the Me Too movement to a point. We'll call it that. So there are many businesses right now who are panicking. Because what they're thinking is, oh my God, like, so this woman, Shireen, is like, telling everybody they should speak up and talk about the experiences of, of what it means to be black in our in our workplace and like we're meant to do that yes but what about all those people that we might have settled with because there was stuff happening in our business that we don't really want anyone to know about um and we've made them sign settlement agreements and like what if this gets out in the open and like can they start talking about this are they allowed so what they're probably doing is getting their senior HR person, whoever that is, chief people officer, head of HR, HRD. And that person's got to ring up the solicitors and go, where do we stand if, where do we stand if so-and-so, if Johnny wants to go and do an interview and talk about his experience of being black, where do we stand if Sandra starts to talk about the fact that, you know, we ignored the fact that you know one of the directors made a racist comment against her and we did nothing for him and she kicked up a fuss raised a grievance and then we just decided to like you know just sell because that's what you do just sell where do we stand more hr directors you know this is really rubbish isn't it it's really rubbish really rubbish where do we stand where do we stand so having all of that sort of questions and then potentially like the solicitor is probably going to say, look, you know, the clause that says it's confidentiality, if they break the clause, they got to pay the money back. So whatever you settled with them, in theory, they could hand you back the money and then say whatever they want. So, you know, not a lot you can do about that um, because by the time they've spoken, they've spoken and yes, you can try and call it back, but, you know, the publicity and they, will, they would have talked to them all about the publicity. So then what they might suggest is, oh, what you might want to do is, why don't you just call that person and just, just, see how they are, check in, see how they're feeling about this whole Black Lives Matter, because that might give you an indication whether they're more or less likely to say something out loud. Oh, listen, for anyone that's telling me this don't happen, there are some of you who are watching this who know full well this is happening as we speak. So what I want to say to this is, as business leaders, you have got choices in all of this. You can do what some people are doing, which is choose to ignore it because they're up, they're either very small, they don't have any black people, they don't they don't they're not bothered about the issue from that point of view of doing something. They're thinking that this might be a storm in a teacup, which means it's going to pass and then everybody else is going to carry on. Um, then you've got other businesses who are genuinely trying to learn, genuinely trying to educate themselves, genuinely trying to raise awareness. Still kind of stumbling a little bit, still not 100% sure, but still want to definitely show up for their people more importantly, and also be conscious of what they say to the, to the, to the world, right? Then you've got those businesses that have skeletons in their closets, just like the Me Too movement, just like the Me Too movement. So now they're thinking, shit. You know, on one hand, you've got maybe like they've dealt with it via settlement agreements, but on the other hand, they might have people that are still in the business who have like I said before, swallowed all the things that they really wanted to say because they've not pushed when people haven't been disciplined. They've not pushed when managers haven't been pulled up for things. They've not, you know, how many equal pay claims do you have in your business that you've just given the party line and expected the HR person to give the kind of party line that says, you know, we use a job evaluation system and we have graded this job fairly according to blah, blah, blah criteria. 
you know, all of that bullshit stuff, you know, we, we, we already know that happens. So you've got to think about whether you put your energy into chasing after the horse when they bolted, or if you go, do you know what? Fuck it, they bolted. Let's just deal with it and let's just focus on what we can do now with the people that we have and think about how we can genuinely build a stronger and better business. Clearly, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to tell you to do that. But you, I'm not naive enough. And if anyone thinks, you know, because some people are just like, oh my God, Shereen, you're just like, you're so brave when you do this. Yeah, I am. But I'm not naive either. I know how it works. Like, I know how it works. That's why I can talk about it. And I think that's why people um, identify with what I'm saying. Because as well as the stuff I'm talking about race, I'm also talking about how, what happens behind closed doors. Probably some people are really worried about, oh my God, what's she going to say? She's going to talk about us. Is she going to name us? Listen, if, if you decide to read anything into what I say and you think it's about you, well, that says more about you than it does about me. But all I'm saying is that stuff is going to happen. Now, that's my point one. So, you know, you have to decide as a business whether you're going to put all your energy and get lawyers to kind of reread clauses and pay the money just to kind of tell you what I've just told you. Um, or you recognise the fact that, you know what, you just might have to deal with some things and potentially you just get a good PR company on the line and just say at any moment in time, I might need you to do damage limitation because some of our employees might start singing like canaries. So you just got to think about it and decide how are you going to address it? Because potentially this is a Me Too movement because people will start singing. And don't forget, it's not just your black employees. You've got other, you've got non-black employees who feel just as incensed about what's going on as their black colleagues, black friends, black neighbours, who go, do you know what, this is so out of order. You might not be ready to say something, but I am going to say something. I'm going to tell them, whoever, I'm going to write on Glassdoor, I'm going to, you know, go write a review on the business and tell them what really goes on. So you've got to really be aware of that. So that's point one. 